Hello, hi, and welcome to um, the read aloud for our June 2nd Energy Efficiency Day um, at the 2021 Green Living Festival put on by your one and only Earthway Center of the Missouri Botanical Garden. My name is Freddie Frederica Brandt, and I work for the U.S. Green Building Council, Missouri Gateway Chapter, um, affiliated with our Missouri Botanical Garden. And I'm happy today to be reading aloud um, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. Um, so, the Boy Who Harnessed the Wind is an inspiring true story about William Kumkamba of Moali in southeastern Africa, who created electric wind when his family, village, and country were stricken with drought and famine in 2002. The book, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, is written by William Kumkwamba and Brian Mueller and is published in three versions. It's a picture book, which I'm reading aloud to you today, a young adult book, and a best-selling creative nonfiction full-length book. William Kumkwamba built a windmill out of bas bicycle and tractor parts, bottle caps, gum tree poles, and PVC pipe. He taught himself physics and electronics to solve the real world problems of sustainability and is a participant in the global clean energy transition today. Now a Netflix film, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, can inspire you and your family to keep learning through discovery, imagination, and magic to manifest the vision we have within all of us to solve problems of sustainability. Follow along as I read aloud The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind picture book. Then get creative and dive into a fun interactive digital wind turbine activity or manifest your own wind turbine with our paper cutout activity to create your own sustainability solution. And you can even go solar and make an origami sun and bring it with you to the Missouri Botanical Gardens origami in the garden until October 10th. Okay, let us begin. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kumkwamba and Brian Mueller. Pictures by El Elizabeth Zunan. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind William, by William Kumkwamba and Brian Mueller. Pictures by Elizabeth Zunan. What is that an image of? What do you see there? In a small village in Mohali, where people had no money for lights, Nightfall came quickly and hurried poor farmers to bed. But for William, the darkness was best for dreaming. He dreamed of building things and taking them apart, like the trucks with bottle cap wheels parked under his bed and pieces of radio that he'd crack open and wonder, if I can hear the music, then where's the band? His grandpa's tales of magic also whispered in the pitch black of his room. Witch planes passed through the window, while ghost dancers twirled around the room as if a hundred men were inside their bodies. For all its power over dancers and flying things, magic could not bring the rain. Without water, the sun rose angry each morning and scorched the fields, turning the maize into dust. Without food, Mawali began to starve. Wow, look at the details of this picture book. The sun has so many layers. It looks like it's made out of paper, like our origami sun. Soon, William's father gall gathered the children and said, From now on, we eat only one meal per day. Make it last. In the evenings, they sat around the lantern and ate their handful, watching hungry people pass like spirits along the roads. Money had also disappeared with the rain. Papani, his father said, I am sorry, you will have to drop out of school. Why? Why do you think Papani has to drop out of school? What does he need in order to go to school? How come his family can only eat one meal per day? 
what's happening to the earth, to the earth around them. So now William stood on the road and watched the lucky students pass. Alone with the monster in his belly and the lump in his throat, for weeks he sulked under the mango tree until he remembered the library down the road, a gift from the Americans. What is he going to find at the library down the road? Let's find out. <gasps> William found science books filled with brilliant pictures. With his English dictionary close by, William put together how engines move those big trucks and how radios pull their music from the sky. But the greatest picture of all was a machine taller than the tallest tree with blades like a fan. A giant pinwheel? Something to catch magic? What do you think it is? Slowly, he built the sentence. Windmills can produce electricity and pump water. It's a windmill. He closed his eyes and saw a windmill beside his home, pulling electricity from the breeze and bringing light into the dark valley. He saw the machine drawing cool water from the ground sending it gushing through the thirsty fields, turning the maize tall and green. Even when farmers' pray, prayers for rain went unanswered, this windmill was more than a machine. It was a weapon to fight hunger. <laughs> he whispered, I will build electric wind. In the junkyard, pieces appeared, like rusted treasures and tall grass, a tractor fan, some pipe, and bearings and bolts that required every muscle to remove. Donga! He'd shout to the birds and spiders, holding up his prize. But as William dragged his medals home, people called out, This boy is <laughs> Misala! Only crazy people play with trash! But is it trash to William? What do you think William is collecting all these parts for? After many weeks, William arranged his pieces in the dirt. A broken bicycle, rusted bottle caps and plastic pipe, even a small generator that powered a headlight on his bike. For three days, he bolted, banged, and tinkered. While chickens squawked and dogs barked, the neighbors shook their heads, saying, What's Misala doing now? What is he doing now? What is William doing? His cousin Jeffrey and his best friend Gilbert soon appeared. Mula Biwanji, they greeted. Can we help with electric wind? Grab your pingas and follow me, he said, and took them into the forest. Together, they swung their sharp blades into the trunk of the blue gumballs, then hammered them together to make their tower. Standing atop, William shouted, bring it up. While well, the boys tugged and heaved, a crowd gathered below and gazed at the strange machine that now leaned and wobbled like a clumsy giraffe. Some giggled, others teased, but William waited for the wind. Like always, it came. First, a breeze. Then a gusting gale, the tower swayed and the blades spun around. <gasps> Yay! <gasps> With sore hands once slowed by hunger and darkness, William connected wires to a small bulb which flickered at first, then surged as bright as the sun. Tonga, he shouted, I have made electric wind. Mm. 
Witch it up, we know, a man yelled. Well done! As the doubters clapped and cheered, William knew he had just begun. Light could not fill empty bellies, but another windmill could soak the dry ground, creating food where once there was none. Mangesta mefoil, <laughs> electric wind, can feed my country, William thought. Yay! And that was the strongest magic of all. Feeding his country so his people could live. What were the steps it took in order to produce such energy in the food for his country and family? to eat. Yeah, he built a windmill. Well, first he learned, he discovered for himself how he could produce energy from the wind, from the earth itself. So with the wind coming in from the earth, it turns the wind turbine blades around and around, producing energy. And that energy is used as electricity to pump water up from the ground. And that water, what does it do? It helps water the crops. And as the crops grow and the corn grows, they can harvest it and feed their family, their village, and their country. And that was the strongest magic of all. For Justin Yin, whose strength, courage, passion, and spirit will always inspire those who knew him, said Elizabeth Zunon. For Nolan, from Brian Mueller, and for Tayamik, from William Kumquamba. This book was published in 2012. Have a great day. Bye.